Great to have you once again on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's get uh, straight to the papers this morning and see what we can find. Uh, we're starting this morning with the Nigerian Tribune and uh, it's going to be on your screen in just a few seconds. Our guest also, Chris Wandu, is uh, joining us. There you have it. It says here, Nigerians must have free access to self-expression. The U.S. envoy is saying, and that's in regards to the Twitter ban. Suspension in national interest, federal government tells U.S., U.K. and Canada. Operas, NBC directs broadcast stations to uninstall Twitter handles. And uh, tweeting, guaranteed on the U.N. Charter on Human Rights, says Adiboye. We can also see SCBN increases forex allocation to banks, assures liquidity for invincibles. Suspected headsmen killed 30 in Benue and Ogun. Reps probe NPA over utilization of $18 million insurance uh, fund and uh, heavy security presence in Igongon. We spoke about that yesterday. Twitter ban may run us bankrupt, says entrepreneurs. Also on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, IGP suspends tinted glass uh, permits, says roadblocks remain banned. And also allow Southeast secede if their leaders insist. And that is from uh, Northern Elders. Those are the big ones on the Tribune this morning. And moving on to the next newspaper, um, we see here on The Punch, the headline reads, Police confused on mass trial order. Adeboye Kumui defy Twitter ban. How do police arrest prominent Nigerians because they're using Twitter? And that's according to Force. Order wrong. UK, US, Canada insist. FG begs global powers, alleges destabilization plot. And uh, Deeper Life founder declares, my tweets targeted a global audience in over 100 nations. Nigeria, others lost $1 trillion oil revenue in two years, says OPEC. Nigeria among top three countries with electricity deficit, according to the World Bank. 21 professionals begin forensic audits of MDAs next week. INEC prepares for voter registration, concludes polling units expansion. Also on the Punch newspaper, Navy replaces decommissioned ship with UAE-built warship. National Assembly concludes PIB deliberations, but Jabiamina says, bill not anti-business. Also, Joshua, Undo community market shots, brother recalls last encounter. Pupils withdrawn. Fear grips Ibarakpa over rumored fresh attack. Buhari appoints aides for wife on admin, women affairs, health. Man stabs Ogun Bricklayer to death over 20,000 naira debt. Mbaka flays DSS summons says, I can't be dumbfounded. Ogun community, police differ as suspected herdsmen kill three farmers. Those are the ones on the punch. And on the Guardian newspapers this morning, Adeboye Kumui defend Twitter use as envoys again reject ban. Government seeks understanding, gives condition to lift ban in meeting with envoys, and also NBC directs broadcast stations to delete unpatriotic Twitter. Asking TV and radio stations to deactivate Twitter accounts is unlawful, says Serap. And uh, we can also see here federal government adamant on fossil fuels despite $13 trillion projected global losses. Says energy transition too futuristic. Insecurity, high cost production, high production cost and declining investment, PIB, top fresh concerns. Also on The Guardian this morning, allow Igbos to secede if need be, Northern Elders advise federal government. Hospitality sector on wait and see as a restriction threatens survival. Um, I think that uh, those are the ones on The Guardian, not so many of them. And lastly, on The Daily Independence, telecom operators lose over 15 million subscribers in five months. Herdsmen attack Benue community, kill 30, injure several. At Nigeria's 4 million barrels daily production targets sacrosanct Buhari. Uh, Buhari gives new army chief tips on how to tackle insecurity. And defense minister says we're only aiding police to do their job. FAN acquires equipment to combat bird strikes at airport. Federal government orders TV, radio stations to disable Twitter accounts. Gives condition for lifting Twitter ban. DSS summons Fadambaka to Abuja. IGP bans spy number plates, issuance of tinted permits. 
How First Bank Oni's appointment as PENCOM chairman breaches corporate governance code. And the PDP here says, we're confident Zamfara governor won't join APC. And lastly, Undo loses 105 medical doctors in 12 months. Um, let's welcome our guest, publisher of CK News, Mr. Chris Wando. Good morning. Good morning. Again. Thanks yes, for good morning. Thanks for joining us. Once more, the Twitter ban issue rules on the papers this morning. Um, all the newspapers are talking about, you know, the reactions from different church leaders and what the United Nations envoy is saying and the federal government's response. Mr. Wando, what do you think about, you know, this Twitter ban, first of all? For me, this is the most precious uh, 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 <laughs> that I've been given by uh, the federal government since the return to uh, democracy in This is what is taken back to what I used to in 85, uh, when we had to be number four. Uh, then it was the same president that was the head state. We are, that government tried to muzzle the press, muzzle the expression of uh, the freedom of expression of Nigerians, and then um, try to stop Nigerians from exercising the right to freedom of speech. We are seeing the occurrence again in 2021. Um, yes, the government has the right, if you see that uh, there are some pressure uh, in support of the land or publicly. Uh, on each that to read the boards of national security. But nobody told me any how the body, uh, how that contributed to each of these things. I used to Twitter is responsible for the best kidnapping in Nigeria. The president of our 150 children are kidnapped and uh, 98 did not what they have able to get them out. I use that the Twitter behind a swap of the skin and being people in the East. I use that the Twitter is so responsible for their treating the Pope Hart. He started responsible for the burning of um, of um, accomplices in the East, kids going on all past the country. This is what makes sense to me. And um, let, it, let us take it further. They are, when you sign up to any social media platform, when you sign up, there are a portion in that, uh, that you have accept the content of that social, uh, platform, social media platform. Once you seek accept, what that tells that automatically that you will abide whatever rules of engagement that, the, that comes to it. And that is what is happening. So, and also, oh, not forget the fact. The Twitter handle of president was not moved by Twitter. What was just removed was a, a, a just a post image. So I don't know why that government is take this as if it would die here. And let us take it further. The ninth constitution, the nineteen ninety nine constitution, as amended in section two one um, subsection one, guarantees the form of expression every Nigerian on issues that border. That concern, that is a, a guarantee by our constitution. So, by federal government and not rightly banning the use of Twitter, now going to everybody that they go after everybody. Yesterday, NBC issued a statement that um, a broadcast station should not use Twitter. The Attorney General of the said that people will be arrested, those that, those that uh, engage in Twitter. Where does the AGF uh, uh, get that power? He does not have that one, not in any form. So, okay, this is highly accepted, and we are practicing in democracy, which make sure that we are practicing democracy and not behaving as if we are in a military regime. Well, this is not a military regime. And most appealing to me is that even our representatives, by later representatives at the National Assembly, keep kept mute. They are not saying anything. Are they saying that they? Uh, they agree with the federal government. What is the top of the National Assembly was some time ago try to regulate the social media, and probably this um, <laughs> they are capping half the federal government on this side. But to me, 
this is definitely on the table and we must start. All right. Um, well, once again, sadly, we have to talk about uh, insecurity um, once again this week. And it says uh, 30 people were killed by suspected headsmen in Ogun State. Um, I was saying yesterday that, um, you know, as we report the 32, I believe, um, and 88 in, in Kebi. In Kebi, yes. Um, and, and 20 in Igongong. That, you know, before the end of the week, you, of course, will be reporting once again another dozens. And, well, here we are. So quickly also share your thoughts on that one. 30 people killed in Ogun State by suspected headsmen. Yes, that is what I'm saying. We should be more concerned with the issue of insecurity across the land and start um, stop chase shadows. We have serious problems facing. Twitter is this of Nigerian problem. You are talking of a B, you are talking of even you know just just a uh, few days ago, um, close to about the people were slaughtered and killed. And we're not talking about that. Are we trying to use as a, a, a diverge? Are we divert attention of Nigerians from the problem that are facing us? The federal government is more, more interested in talking about Twitter and um, going ahead uh, on how to run on a bar. Is that our problem now? And Nigerians are killed on a daily basis. I think that should be a challenge for now. The federal government should be thinking of how to set aside of insecurity that is practically taking no every notice in any part of this country. And you are talking to it. How many people are uh, tweet? And that is to me a problem. And it's like these men have lost total attention on what to do. And the earlier they go to their responsibility, the better. The primary responsibility of every bank is the security of life and property of these people. And not about Twitter or tweeting or tweeting. That is not the You cannot move from point to the other interior without being kidnapped, without being killed, or without being made and rest them. And working out to you, is that a problem? It is high time that every responsible Nigeria should talk. Africa now, because uh, we all that some will be asked when this is happening, what did you do? What did you history, history has a way of putting sort for each and every one of us, and that is the challenge for me. So let's let the federal bend face squarely the problem, the challenges we have in our the problem of security. They are talking of the election with the way that going, I'm sure we're going to have the country and the election. I really doubt that. All right. So still talking about, you know, related to security, we know that the issue of secession has been uh, a big one in recent time. And uh, Northern Elders here say on the, on the Nigerian Tribune, allow South East secede if their leaders insist. We also saw your protests over the weekend, you know, women in Northern Nigeria protesting to say, let's, you know, people in the South East secede if they want to. Um, should we be talking about this, letting people secede if they want to? Do we, should we be talking about a referendum? What really should be uh, the conversation regarding this issue? If there is equity and fair play, there will be no addition for session. The fundamental problem we have now is the fact that people don't feel a sense of belonging where they, they don't feel a sense of belonging to their Nigeria. And that is where the agitation is going on. Give everybody a sort of belonging, and we'll be happy to stay. But when you find a question where they cannot do today, there is a real country where they should be talk. Then that word this was, was the, the South 10 years ago. Do you see South way that, yes, the South way is over? Yes, I've been saying we want to say we want to go with the rest of them. But now, even the South is agitated more in the South way, even the South East. And that to me is a problem, and so we should be looking at. So, um, for not that, uh, not that uh, for um, to come out to say, oh, allow the South East to go if they want to go, or the Northern women protesting uh, that and let them get started. It is not easy to go like that. What I believe that for me, even though I'm from the South, what I believe that what we need is equity and fair play. If you have equity and people have a sense of belonging where they are, and you make people believe that they are, they are, they are position can You make them believe your appointment as the potency. You, you make everybody believe that uh, which is one idea where you don't feel that a particular ethnic group must need the others. People will be agitated. That's what do we have now? And that is becoming prominent because of the 
body language of our elite president, especially the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is giving we are his body language and where we are taking on all issues that concerns security and we will have a holistic look at issues concerning Nigeria, what is country. But good enough. Um, the National Assembly is going to have the, uh, the Constitution review, and we will hope to go from Firstly, I don't feel anything formal that I don't feel with the set of the legislators that we have, I don't see any good coming of it. So, but as I said, let them be, let them be, let them have a sort of feedback from what is not stuck or the last of the way. Let them be a sort of feedback. This is going to be a cloud. This is not our particular This is not Nigeria. Then we have nothing worth doing currently. All right. Um, struggling with the network and clarity of sound from uh, your end, but we'll see if it gets uh, better. Um, you know, I want to go back to the Twitter conversation once again. Uh, you mentioned uh, the silence of the National Assembly, uh, but there's people who have not stood silent, and that's uh, the, the leaders of two churches, uh, Pastor Adeboye and uh, uh, Kumui. Uh, but they are still being criticized for you know, the approach that they are taking, claiming that their churches are domiciled in, you know, 100 plus countries across the world. And, you know, by the UN Charter, they, you know, of course, have freedom to express themselves online and offline. Um, so, you know, quickly also share your thoughts. You know, there, there's been criticism for, you know, their approach because their church members don't have, you know, themselves in 100 uh, churches, or 100 countries across the world. And so do you think uh, Adiboy and Kumi have done the right thing by, of course, staying on Twitter and um, holding on to the UN Charter? Or should they instead be speaking for their people and asking that the, the ban be lifted? The ban is an infringement on the right of It is an infringement on the right of Pastor Dr. Kumuye. It is an infringement on your personal rights. It is an infringement on the right of CK. It is an infringement on the right of plus Africa that has been asked to stop using it. That. that is what I say. Um, top um, members of European uh, uh, countries and the youth met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs today. And he was trying to justify the reason why Twitter was uh, uh, suspended or um, whichever one was. But they told them privately that what you are doing is illegal. You are infringing on the right of expression of your people. And that is not right. So I don't see where um, Pastor uh, Kumuyi or Pastor Depo. I listened to OBS one of the states yesterday. And he was saying, How are we confusing that? Come and rest. And I want to see how the, how the uh, AGF. Um, I'm waiting to go and arrest Pastor uh, uh, Kumuye and also Pastor Adebo. Even Governor Nasir Elmai tweeted yesterday, the article has been tweeted. Are you going to ask them? So, whether we like it or not, I think we should choose us before we swallow it. Um, the AGF is the Attorney General of Federation, and he's a legal minister, and he should know better when it comes to issue of law. And that Saturday's announcement. Some stations already said that what's the court which they are going to go to. I know of some TV show and radio stations that already said that, that they are going to go to court to fight this. Let us, maybe we we'll go to the court. I have that just we call call up this time. So there are some people that who want to go to court, will go to court, able to fight it. Um, this, I believe, must stand. Okay, okay. Um, another story that has been trending is that the president, Muhammad Buhari, appointed new aides for his wife, an aide for admin, an aide for health, you know, and uh, people have just been talking about it, saying, you know, this is just one way the government is mismanaging funds. How do you see it? When the president came in 2015, it's, uh, 2015, it's nothing, nothing like the office of the first day. I don't know that you still, those of you still remember. I'm sure you remember very well. Yeah. He said there's not an office of the uh, uh, but what we are seeing now is <laughs> uh, just like so the promises and the promise that was made, which they have denied. It is his prerogative. He 
you want to uh, you want to uh, appoint an envoy, not that uh, a former aide to the uh, to the white president has just been appointed by the federal government to represent Nigeria to UNESCO, and that is why they have appointed another. Thing. So um, I don't want the office of the, whether that office is concerned. I don't think there is nothing in the constitution that created the office. That is part of the illegality we are talking about. But uh, if that wants to run this government, well and good. But for me, what I'm much interested in that let them deliver promise they made. There are so many promises that are made. And this government, they are barely two years to go um, to complete a uh, term uh, of eight years. Let them deliver on their promises because that is all to hold them responsible come 2023 when we're going to go into another election. All right, finally, uh, before we go. Uh, the new inspector general has come in and, you know, of course, has taken the same steps that every inspector general takes. First of all, banning roadblocks and then withdrawing uh, police officers from VIPs. And then thirdly, also um, uh, banning or stopping uh, tinted permits. It's, you know, it's like clockwork. They do all of them, you know, do the same thing. Um, so once again, it's in the news this morning that the IGP has uh, ordered that uh, tinted permits be stopped. Um, quickly react to that before we go. And that's all nature. You know what it is. Uh, I think you know what I mean in this chart. Is there any idea of that? And it is the all road to the 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 road to it's it's pretty difficult getting you know much of what you're saying because of the network but uh, gladly, we uh, have, uh, you know, run out of time for this. So uh, we'll say thank you for your time. Thank you for speaking with us this morning. And looking forward to another uh, conversation with you in the morning like this. Thank Good morning you. once again. Thank you very much. Nice. Absolutely. All right. Stay with us. So what happened on this day in uh, history? I'm going back to the year 1968 to tell you about James L. Ray. And I'm going to 1998. Do you stay with us.